well, it's gonna be a very fun prayer then. Because um, it's a piece that I composed on 2 Timothy, and 2 Timothy, um, 2 Timothy really talks about, um, you know, when Paul was encouraging Timothy, you know, you have a message to spread, so spread it, and spread it with boldness, with, with, um, with vigor, and don't let anything really hold you back, because, I mean, what holds back a soldier, right? If they have to get something done, they get something done. So, we have messages as performing artists, and we want to get it done. So this is just a reminder that we got to get it done. Like I said, it's a fun prayer, so we can enjoy it. Listen, let me remind you of the sincere faith that's in you, that you should stir up the gift of God that's within you. For your God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control in here. Therefore, don't be ashamed of your testimony, but endure the hardship and do it only for his glory. Spread the good news, would you? Cause you can't lose all oh, my Bible thumpers, soldiers of God, keep ripping it for Jehovah. Who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which is given to us in Christ Jesus through faith. And since the appearance of a savior, absolutely nothing could be more plain. Death defeated, life vindicated, in a blaze of light, although the work of Christ. See, I am not ashamed, for I know him whom I believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to guard what I've committed to him until that day he calls me home yeah I am not ashamed for I know him whom I believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to guard what I've committed to him until that day he calls me home Can I give you some more? Yeah. All right, check it out. My brothers and sisters, be strong in the grace that you found in Christ Jesus. You wait a minute. Like good soldiers, keep on fighting and don't be distracted by anything and don't spend time on things that ain't part of God's duty. Keep running the race and just do whatever it takes to win, man. You want to reap a harvest, but you got to put your hand to the plow, man. It's hard truth on a rocky road. Put your trust in God and raise you up when you fall. Think about what I'm saying, man. The Lord will help you understand it all. So study to show that self-approved. A workman that needed not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And like a college kid, you're going to graduate. And teach those who oppose it into the truth and a change of mind. They regain their senses and escape the devil's snare. And they too can be unashamed and share. Yeah. See, I am not ashamed for I know him whom I believed. And now I'm persuaded that he is able to guard what I've committed to him until the day he calls me home. Yeah, I'm not ashamed for I know him whom I believed. And I'm persuaded that he is able to guard what I've committed to him until the day he calls me home. So I just want to give you a little bit of more encouragement, all right? You see, in the fourth chapter of the second letter given to Timothy, he's encouraged by Paul, his mentor. And in the same way, I encourage you to share that message. Be ready whether it is convenient or not. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with complete patience and instruction. For there will be a time when people will not tolerate sound teaching. Instead, following their own desires, they will accumulate teachers because they have an insatiable curiosity to hear new things and from the teaching of the truth they will turn a blind eye and to myths they will turn aside. But you, however, be self-controlled in all things and your hardship do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. Allow yourself to be poured out as an offering until the good Lord calls us home at time which is soon approaching. And then you will be able to say, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the course and I have kept the faith. And from now on there is awarded unto me a crown of righteousness with the Lord the righteous judge will award to me on that day but not only to me but to you those who have loved is appearing so hold fast the form of sound words which you have heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ 
Consider what I say and the Lord give you understanding in all things. So yeah, you can take my word for it because it's God's words. This is just a reminder. And now until the... Be glory, honor forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to welcome you here on this rainy morning. And some of you coming from all down south, I really appreciate that. Um, south on both ends of the island. And it really shows me that CPA, the Caribbean Performing Arts Federation, that we are here to launch today is important to you. And I do appreciate you coming. Uh, I would like to, first of all, introduce my, the, the directors. CPAP, is, I should say, is, um, com consists of directors on a regional body, which is the OECS. We really, are, um, we really do concentrate on the OECS countries and territories. And so we have with us today some of our directors that's on the executive, and I'd like to just say who they are, and they will be speaking to you a little later. But first, first of all, before I introduce my directors, I should address the, um, Dr. Kentry Jean-Pierre, who is a parliamentary secretary from the Ministry of Tourism, Heritage, and Creative Industries, who is here with us today, and we really do appreciate his presence. And uh, sit at the head table. Yes, give me all your hands. And we also have with us our chief executive director, as Urban C. Durant from Dominica. And our, in program development, we have Ms. Sandra A. James, who is operations and programs director. And she's from the lovely Spice Island of Grenada. And from our next door neighbor here in St. Vincent, we have our brand and marketing director, Mr. Samuel Brown. A little later on, we will, I will introduce you to our task force as well, our St. Lucia task force. But around, right about now, I'd like to really just welcome not only the directors and those that have come from afar, but the people who are representing institutions, ministries, and also the performing artists that are here that took the time to come here today, because this is all about you, and also people who we're looking to partner with, but most of all, the media who are here with us today, who took the time, because I know there are a hundred things going on at the same time, but they've made it their duty to come here today so that they can inform St. Lucia on what's happening. So I'm gonna introduce right now our first guest speaker, who is Mr. Urban C. Duran, the Chief Executive Director of CPAF. Good morning again. Um, first of all, we would like to acknowledge Dr. Kenley Jean-Pierre, Parliamentary Secretary from the Ministry of Tourism, Heritage, and Creative. Ken Kendry Jean-Pierre, sorry. My apologies. Um, Ministry of Tourism, Heritage, and uh, Creative Industries. All the government representatives that are here, Ms. Yvonne Egard from the CSI, CPAF directors, fellow directors, the National Task Force for St. Lucia, media, and um, other special invited guests. Um, I am here to give you a synopsis, sort of, of the concept of CPAF, the Caribbean Performing Arts Federation. And um, it is said that it is a, my brainchild, and uh, these people are helping in the loop. Well, 
it started off with Miss James in Grenada, and um, we've, in terms of the labor pains, to bring this child to birth. And CPAF is, is a continuing process right here. As it grows, as we have covered the Windward Islands, um, in terms of reaching out and meeting fellow performers, fellow creators across the OECS, the Windwards, and encountering the ver some of the very same frustrations, some of the very same problems and difficulties, challenges that are not exclusive to you if you were thinking that they are. And uh, it dates back, the, the, the work, the, 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 this process began um, way back, which I would have to give credit to my parents, I would think, and the access that was given to us as young people. I was one of those that were privileged to have a band in my basement. And uh, as a teenager at high school, I was another one who was privileged to have received a camera kit when I was 17, so that I would be able to explore what I felt to capture nature and to utilize the great um, provision of God. Um, over the years, the, despite the fact that I did what some of you will understand as sciences, basic sciences for, with the intention of being a medical student, it wrapped itself around to the point where I never really got beyond that and was redirected to do business marketing. And uh, business marketing allowed me to be able to tank or bank into the um, visual arts, which I had as something within, a creative gift of God, we would say. The music never left. And I'm going to skip some years. I was married to a beautiful young woman who, just like Adrian here, gave a lot, not as a performer. I don't even think if she was alive, she would probably want to be associated with a performing arts foundation or federation because she believed that she was a minister. And that is something that some people, as far as their theoretical explanation is concerned, that they would say. But all these things, she, she, she passed away in 99. She um, recorded twice. And uh, working with her as a husband, as a co-writer, as an executive producer, as a manager of her music and her ministry, all of those came into the mix, which would basically prepare for what is being birthed today as CPAF. Um, my second degree, which is visual arts, um, with a concentration in photography, when I got back to the country, to my country, um, I did business and I got involved with music. Um, we, through an, a, a company that we, we established um, called Carry Jazz Music, and I don't think that it has reached or it created waves enough for you to hear about it. You would have heard about the other things that are like the WCKs and the bands and not necessarily the organizations that pushed things like the Midnight Groovers, which we were privileged to work with at one point. And the famous little Mikael Henderson, which you all must know, that um, I actually had the privilege of hearing do an a cappella version when she was 15 years old at a basketball court. And uh, there I spoke with her, with, with her dad, and uh, we took her and brought her into the first jazz unit which, which we were putting together on Dominica called Impact. Um, shortly after that, her dad passed away and uh, it, the dynamics of things changed. She got married and that disappeared, dissipated. Now, I am saying all of this to give you where this has come from. 
So, although as a marketing person, professional marketing person coming back into the workforce, um, music was still something. So I played with the church. I never was a musician that you would see going to the studio, to the sessions, or going to the live gigs. And professional photographer is what people would refer to me as. Um, I had a business that was called Photo World, and so my name was no longer Irving Dura. It became Photo World for like a number of years. But the visual and the performing arts were gelling. And uh, being back on the island, I began to want to give back to the community. And so I started an, a, a voluntary program in two rural schools doing visual arts. And the government got wind of that in 20, 2007 when I got back to the island. They actually came on board and invited me to run a program in 2008, which um, I am seeing a sister of the famous Alwyn Bully, Miss Barbara Bully, right over there. Um, he was on a committee that, and he was also on my panel of judges for the program that we ran called Pix Junior Shutterbox. And government got that and got interested in it and came and put some money in there so that we would be able to do sensitization and education and help to change the face of how things were done in the private sector and also in the public sector. Um, that continued while I did music on the side. Carry jazz music, then brought forward a jazz, a sort of fusion jazz group called Shades of Green. And um, we began to work. So I had these two programs running, music and uh, visual arts. And I became a big voice for the visual arts trying to bring painters, designers, um, visual artists together. Um, it was a challenge. It was hitting the head on the wall. Actually, one famous quote by somebody that you would consider to be civilized, when I got back after a master's degree, I was walking three cameras all night long, and I was trying to get a project done for what we had called at the time the NDC, National Development Corporation. And uh, I was getting paid $30,000 for the project. But M Miss, um, Mrs., uh, what I just said here, civilized person, made a comment that I heard. They said, he must be making his parents very sad to be walking around with three cameras like a donkey after having gone to study. Now, those words I will never forget, not that they weigh on me, but I will never forget them because they came from somebody who was educated, civilized, socially involved, and at the same time, I am working within a school system, a school system which was beginning to, with the technological changes, with the pressures from coming through um, the, the CARICOM and donors and uh, coming down our, our, our channels, asking us to change or to amend the education formats in schools so that arts, more arts would be embedded into the curriculum. And I continued to work there and meet the teachers, elementary, grade K, to the college, and also at times work with the communities at their centers to work with community people that wanted to know better. I also met with professors at the university like the Ross University, their professors who bought cameras because they could buy expensive cameras because they get fat checks. But those cameras they could not use because they did not understand them. They understand medicine, they understand biology, hematology, but geniuses, a genius is not necessarily an astronaut. And that is one of the things that we have failed to be able to recognize and give tribute to the other geniuses that we have sitting next to us at schools. And when governments, and a lot of our OECS, and I speak almost freely 
because it's like a blueprint. What happens in Dominica happens in St. Lucia, in Grenada, St. Vincent. Within OECS, this is almost how this happens. And we came upon a system where they were asking, they were asking the schools to Im include more of the arts and the performing arts easy to do because everywhere has a cultural dance. So you don't have to be a trained teacher in ballet or in any other dance or even in or your local culture. You just do whatever and you're using up a class time. Visual arts, well, let's cut some paper and it's simple. It's cut the paper, use the glue, paper mache, not art. And this is happening in 20, 2009 through 2013, where we have gone through the explosion of the dot-com era, when little people that were called geeks at school were now coming up with the Google and the Facebook that will dominate how the world runs. We are continuing to see the same thing even today where at schools, the program that I work with in Dominica, which is, it was called CPC, it began as visual arts because of my background. It eventually became something that we called communication through the arts. More performance arts got involved, and by the time this was happening, some of the schools were beginning to employ, especially private schools, employ dance and theater teachers, and so you, you found most music teachers. But that was education. So there was a struggle with the growth of education. The teachers were still telling the, the students don't be foolish, because if a child is doing bits instead of listening to a subject, that is the genius of that child. But we don't see that because we want to teach them geography at that time. And even when they go home, the parents who have also not made that connection with that child is a genius, but a musical genius, would brown them, would take away their little instrument, and tell them that they have to read the history. I would go to the schools and the teachers would be like frustrated because they have no, they, they have no training. They have no process. The curriculum has said that they must teach a class in VPA. And then suddenly VPA became a thing that is raining across the OECS islands. It was always there visual and performing arts. But we threw the acronym out and we expect the kids to do better. We expect the teachers to do better. And I don't know, maybe in St. Lucia it's very different. In Dominica today, in 2014, in October, they will graduate another batch of three to 400 teachers who will go into the primary school system and they have not done a comprehensive program in VPA. But they are expected to teach it. Now, as we went around the Caribbean, Trinidad and up, seeking to find markets for our artists that we were associated with and our own works, we came across people who were having the same issues. And we recognized that it was not just Dominica. And so this began to stir up within me and I met people, like when I went to do a program in Grenada, I met Sandra James. And it was one of those things. Even this morning, I was speaking with someone and um, right here in St. Lucia. And uh, we were speaking about information and when information is sent. And uh, when it gets to the first location, how it's disseminated. Sometimes it's information that says in, where's, in Sufria? In Sufria, there's an office in Sufria. All creative artists can come to Sufria to pick up a check of $10,000. Once you can prove you're a creative artist, a creative person. But the information came to Sammy. Sammy, 
And Sammy reads the information, and he doesn't think it too important. The larger islands have only escaped because under CARICOM, before we had the concentration of OECS, they were always more privileged, right? Whether they took it by force or whether it just happened to be a fortunate situation for them that went on like that. I feel very often a lot of frustration for people like me who are creative people. I feel a lot of frustration when I encounter teachers who teach students who still do not understand in 2013 and 14 that a child who is not academic does not mean the child is not a genius because you are not giving them an opportunity to venture into where they could be a genius. So they call them retarded, they put them in the back of the class, they ridicule them because they cannot read. And it is sad, I think, again yesterday we were having another conversation where somebody made a statement talking about most musicians, or most creative people, not creative, most musicians, they said, are illiterate. Is that something some, we heard that yesterday? Now, that is a really strange... And they were not speaking in the context of music. I will tell you that I have met a lot of, I mean, thousands of artists, especially musicians, that they play an instrument and they can't read a musical note. And in that context, you can say that they are illiterate in the context of reading music. But the genius that they produce, another person who thinks that otherwise, is very, very misguided. Now, what we have encountered in recent times is that following the call of, from the donors, the donors who make money is available, to say, come down, we have um, this X amount of cash to put to this, X amount of investment to put in these creative industries, um, sectors, they have made, um, they've put down their rules as well and said that you need to have X, Y, and Z. And uh, so our governments, because they are speaking to our governments, who were not aware at the time of how things run in this sector, because this sector, which is now being called an industry, was always just referred to as a hobby. You're playing a guitar, oh, it's a hobby. You have a camera, it's a hobby. You're painting, it's a hobby. And very rarely would you find one creative person put on a pedestal because they got through, they got a break, right? So the rush began and everybody was just shoved into one, let's call it an S elevator. Let's say that they just threw everybody into an elevator and now the elevator is overloaded with creative and cultural people. I am an artist. If I conceptualize something, it does not necessarily mean that my culture, my environment, my geographical location led me to that creativity. So, this is the general mindset out there, that creative is culture. Culture is creative. Yes, Cultural expression is a lot of creativity and a lot of creative people express their creativity with their culture, their culture for their creativity. But it is not the same. We are people and in this room they are male and female. And that's how culture and creative industries are meant to be realized. And we would like this is the reason why CPAF is here. This is what we are hoping that we would be able to do to be able to set definitions and help to educate from the great K to the politicians or the policy makers to seek to find avenues for expression, not just for us to vent, Adolf Hitler was a musician who wanted to play music and he was denied. 
and he was responsible for World War, you know what. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Irvin Durham. And uh, this is the man behind the concert. And next, I'm going to introduce to you the lady, um, our, my colleague, director, ex executive director, Sandra A. James of Grenada. And she is, her, her role is operations and programs. And she's been it from the beginning with Vim, so she can give you even more information of what CPAF is all about and what, how it's going to operate and, and what our mandates are. So welcome, Sandra A. James, to the podium. Thanks, Jackie. With protocol already established, I'm happy to be back in St. Lucia. Now, CPACs, Irvin explained how it all came about and our accidental meeting in Grenada three years ago. He was able to articulate the frustrations I was experiencing. I'm coming from a theater background. And he was able to give me, provide that bridge to deal with that frustration. Hence my involvement. Now, let's talk CPAC. Out of the gate, it is not a promotions agency. Let me let that sink in. We are not a promotions agency. We are concerned about the business of the development of the performing arts, both musical and theatrical as well as the support services that are necessary for performing artists to succeed. We have a development platform that is founded on four pillars, and we will implement this development platform over a three to five year period. Pillar one, product development, focusing on the artist's all round development. What do I mean by that? The artist is a product, but talent is not enough. Character is important, even more important than the talent. The structure that you would have developed around you is important. So as an artist, do you understand the business of entertainment? Do you understand the legal aspects of the business you're in? For example, do you know what it means to have your music or whatever it is copyrighted? What protection does that afford you? Do you understand the intellectual property aspects? Do you understand contract negotiations? You have an artist manager or you have a booking agent. What's the difference? Does the person managing the artist understand where does that artist talent fall in the global scale? Do we understand the cultural norms of the places where we promote our art? In the Caribbean, we see anything, everything, anywhere, anyhow. We can't go other places in the world and see anything, anywhere, anyhow, or perform a play anywhere, anything, anyhow. We might make jail. So part of the business of entertainment and having that product refined is, do I understand my place? Do I understand the lane that I'm traveling on? And it's not only a St. Lucia or an OECS lane, it's a global lane. Personal development. Do some of you cringe like I do when an artist does a brilliant performance, be a performance poet or a musician, and all the journalists are eager to interview them? And you cringe when you hear the word whiskers and the arms and the ooms and the green, gold, and pink adjectives. 
all that is part of the development of that product that is the artist. As an artist, do we understand the importance of nutrition? Certain foods create problems with the vocal cords. Do we understand as an artist, if you drink too much, it disturbs the rhythm of the body? So for artists I'm speaking to now, are you fit? Power soca is a high energy activity. You have a contract to sing for song. And because you're not fit, by the middle of the first song, you're breathless. Because one or two things happen. You stay up late drinking the night before you're with your buddies. You don't, have, don't know what the inside of a gym looks like. You have nobody responsible for the training of your voice, so you know the do's and don'ts. So you bust in the middle of the first song, and you have three and a half more songs to do. CPAS is going to create an environment that is going to facilitate the holistic development of the product that is the artist. Second pillar, education. This focuses on those who have not come through the door yet, or young people. We can't all be doctors and lawyers. We don't all want to be doctors and lawyers. Does a curriculum reflect the holistic nature of what our kids really want to do? So this part of our development platform will focus on our youth development agenda, recognizing the need to provide a more comprehensive, expanded version of our existing curriculum, both at the primary and secondary levels. Let me give you a little example. I said I came from a theater background, and a friend of mine who is a math specialist was saying to me that there's this child in her class, a little boy in her class, who has no interest in math. Every time there's a math class, his eyes glaze over and he's drumming on the desk. So I said, okay. So where do you think his head is at? She said, oh, he's as a nutritionist and music. I said, good. I said, you need to figure out how do you make math relevant to that interest in music? I said to my English teacher friends, a lot of young people these days, they want to model. The young girls, they want to model. And I said, okay. But a model must have more than air between the ears. She should be familiar with words. She should know how to speak. I said, so relate the subject to the area of interest. And that is just general things. So our education platform will seek to work with local organizations and ministries of education to ensure that there is a focus from development of foundation programs that will supplement the CXC program. And that's another issue. At the CXC level, there is an acknowledgement that we need to have the performing arts, which is starts in Form 3. We do math, English, and science from the time we pop and we start school. And then CXC becomes what I call the exit exam. When you start theatre, arts and music in Form 3, what happens when you get to fifth form? There's no foundation because you're busy trying to struggle through the curriculum, do the SBAs. So there need to be some kind of foundation program in the first and second forms. The primary level, K to grade 6. We need to start introducing our kids to the performing arts. That's pillar two. Pillar three, showcasing of events. This is our performance platform through our flagship event, the Caribbean Gems, which will showcase the musical and other live stage talent of our OECS artists. So that would be an event that will be held in rotating OECS territories and will take both the format of daytime workshops targeting specific things, be that in music, 
the importance of music and theatre to our society, to journalists, how do you report on, on performing or creative events, the whole issue of, again, the whole issue of the legal aspects of, of, of the performing arts, then the technical workshop focusing on set design, sound and lighting for effect, wardrobe and makeup, the whole film development. I keep hearing badly about at certain levels of we have funding for film development. The OACS ain't have a film industry. We have to develop one. So we have to look at how do we prepare screenwriting for film? Most territories have renowned playwrights. How do we now train them to adapt the skill that they already have in understanding the nuances of a play in turning it into a screen play? The whole basics of film production, the pre-production, the post-production, the whole issue of the recording and the editing, and how do we properly capture live performances? All these things will be part of our training in the performance platform. And our fourth pillar focuses entirely on our youth. It will be a regional youth challenge that would seek to develop and stimulate the interest of our young people in the performing arts. And it will take the form of a youth competition for both juniors up to age 17, and the out of school youth focusing on all categories of the performing arts. So the plan is each island will have their own internal competition, and the winners will now take part in a regional OECS competition. So ladies and gentlemen, hold on tight. The OECS creative and cultural industry is about to take off. Keep looking for Sipa. Thank you. My cast is supposed to be the simplest, as they say, I'm the last but not the least, and the new kid that's on the block. Um, I'm here just to speak a, a bit on six major activities or marketing strategies that we have implemented, and in some cases we are going to implement in the not too distant, distant future. The first, Sandra spoke a little about it, about our school program, about the educational aspect. Within the training and education aspect, we're also going to focus on marketing throughout the schools, as Sandra spoke, I'll touch a little, but we're going to also do the primary school, secondary school, and the tertiary level. Um, so our focus will be from the primary school level for now, right up to the tertiary level. We have, come, we have coming on board soon special marketing for these folks and promotion for the, the children within the school, within the school, within the OCS sub-region. The next area I'm going to speak a little on is our website. And the third area is our launches, which we have in here today. Caribbean Gems. Um, so I just spoke a little about that. That is our that's main event uh, where we showcase our artists. And we're going to speak a little about our membership drive and last but not least, our regional marketing. School training and school programs that Sandra had alluded to earlier. We're going to try our best, as Vin was speaking earlier about, to incorporate the schools into CPAP development program, not only from the training perspective, but also there are a lot of young artists within the school who have that talent, raw talent, and we need to get those talent ready and marketable. Because as you would know, a lot of um, the artists today, whether it's singing or drama, started in schools. So we want to start promoting and marketing the younger ones from primary school right up. So this we're gonna start we're gonna start from the primary school and eventually get up to the older ones. So it's a holistic approach as Sandra and Vin alluded to before. The website. Our website 
hopefully will be launched before our next official launch in Grenada. Our launch in Grenada should take place on the 16th of September. By that time, our website should be up and running. Our website is an interactive, informative, and educational tool. Interactive in that we're going to incorporate a, a number of things on the website. Persons can um, fill out our membership form online. Persons, we're going to set up a chat room so artists can chat online, ask questions about, the, about CPAP and where we are going. We're also going to incorporate within the website all major performing arts events throughout the region and later global. So it's going to be a well-informed website, an interactive website. Um, one of the things we have noticed is that we don't want, we want the website to be available, access sorry, to the website to be available in every state so that, because one of the things we, Vin had mentioned is that we don't want persons in St. Vincent or in St. Lucia not having access to the information that they may have had access to in Dominica. So the, informa the information would, would, that Sam just spoke about and Vin spoke about will be accessible on the website once it's launched about what is happening about CPAP, whether in Grenada, whether in St. Vincent, whether in St. Lucia. So persons can access all that information and be able to apply for membership online. The launch, as you know, we launched in, in Dominica early in July, and this is our second launch. Our third launch will be in Grenada, as I mentioned before, on the 16th. It's, a, it's also a media launch, and then hopefully we move to St. Vincent on the 19th of September. So those launches, those would, would be the four launches for the OECS before we move on to the rest of the region. But for now, those are the four planned um, launches for the rest of the year. So our last launch will be in St. Vincent on the 19th of September. And on the 16th, we will be launching in Grenada. And as I mentioned before, we should be launching our website in Grenada on the 17th. I want to speak a little about GEMS. GEMS is a platform we're going to use to promote, to display, to showcase all of our artists, whether it's in performing arts, whether it's singer, dancer, you name it. GEMS is a brainchild, as was said, of um, Irvin and formerly now of SIPA. GEMS will be a, a platform where we will have events in all of the territories, um, we started with the OECS countries. Um, our hope is to have the first GEMS event in either Grenada or St. Lucia by 2015. So our first GEMS event which will showcase every sector, or we're hoping to showcase every sector of the performing arts, whether it is theatre, dance, music. Um, so we're hoping that and the great thing about GEMS, it is a facility where we'll be able to export the talent from the different countries. So when we have, if we decide to have GEMS in St. Lucia, we'll be exporting talent from St. Vincent, from Grenada, and from Dominica to showcase them in St. Lucia, and vice versa. We want to touch a little about a regional marketing strategy that, that we are going to put in place soon. We are in negotiation already with a, a regional media house where we want to have a program that can showcase all of the performing arts throughout the region and beyond. Um, the, the media corporation or the media house has the coverage of over 16 territories. So once the negotiations are finished or uh, completed, Persons will be able to, would, CPAP will be able to showcase the performing arts, personnel, and talent throughout all member states and regional. So it's all, it's an additional um, venue, uh, um, 
area where we can showcase our talent, both on TV and radio. For the singers on radio and for the performing arts, the other performing arts on TV. Membership. Our membership drive, um, we're hoping to start from today. We have completed our membership form, and I'm just going to list some of the categories that are available for persons who want to take membership. We have professional group, we have amateur group, professional individual, and amateur individual. And we also have school. Right. We'll speak a little more about that when we come to question and answers, but those are the categories or the groupings we have where you can take membership. So we, persons who are interested in taking membership, the form should be available um, by today. If not, um, hard copy, at least electronically. So we can email the form to you um, at some point throughout the day, if it's not available here, hard copy. So without anything further to speak about on that, on that matter of membership, I encourage everyone who's in the performing arts, whether you're a singer, dancer, actor, to get on board because CPAP is here to stay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sam. So Sam is our marketing guy and he's going to make sure that through the OECS that CPAP is going to be known and people are going to be encouraged to join CPAP as members. At this time, I would like to talk about our task force. In each territory, there's a task force. The task force are responsible for doing the daily things in the, in the territory on an island basis or country basis. And they have a number of um, responsibilities and tasks. So we have a task force in St. Lucia. I'm very proud to lead this task force. And we have a group of hardworking people who are giving up their time because it's all voluntary. So we really do appreciate that. And at this time, not everybody is here, but those who are here, I'm going to present to you. And we are very pleased and, and heartened that the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Tourism, Heritage and Creative Industries has seen fit to actually put one of his staff on our task force. And that means a lot to us. And this person is no other but Imran Emmanuel. He's the Creative Industry Officer. I'd like you to come up, please. Imran. Um, everybody, please come up when I call you. And Imran has been a great, a great assistance to us, giving us information and support where it's needed. And we also have Cantilia Louis, who most of you might know, that has a really vast theatrical and creative industries or artistical background. And uh, we also have Martha Blanchard. And Martha is the one who is welcoming you all here today, giving you your programs and, and your brochures. And Martha is, has a background of community, community work because she used to be in the Ministry of Social Transformation. And uh, she also has a musical background as she composes as well and write, writes her own songs. So uh, then we have Semi Francis. <laughs> and Semi, of course, is a producer and also a very well known artist from St. Lucia. Lynn Bristol, where is Lynn? Okay. Lynn was here earlier, but most of you all would know Lynn as an artist, uh, event manager, fashion designer and she is also on our task force. Two people that, that could not make it today send their apologies. 
is Martha McLennan, who is a technical person with stage lighting, and Thea Harvey, who is also an event manager, and she's also our admin person for CPAF. And they couldn't make it here today, but they're here with us in spirit. We have a number of people also who are not on our task force, but they are people who we turn to when we need help. And these are, I'm just going to say a few of them. They couldn't all be here today and have all called in to say one way or another, some are out of the island, some had previous appointments, some had work, but some of them I would like to mention. And these are people that are our reference persons who we can refer to on an as-needed basis. We have Linus Alcock, better known as Lenny Dinell, and Scholastic Alcock, his wife, who is here today. She's right here. David Jordan, who couldn't be with us today. We also have Ian Sashe, who drove me in all the rain here today and got me here but had to leave. But Ian is at our back and call wherever we need him. Anderson Reynolds from Jacko Productions in Beaufort as well. We also have Lionel Ellis, uh, who is known in the technical arena um, in terms of he had a radio station, Caribbean Harmony, and ham radios, he's the president. He's just an all-rounder, and he's also one of our reference people. Bernard Fannis as well, of Calabash TV. And uh, we have other people who have actually come up and said, we're here, anything that you need, we're here to help. So I think that our reference persons list is going to grow. So just to let you know the kind of support that we've been getting, that we really appreciate. And uh, right about now, uh, thank you very much, guys. And uh, we'll be hearing a lot more from our task force in the days to come. Okay. A little birdie just reminded me that I haven't said who I am. <laughs> and that's true. Well, I'm Jackie Charabin Weeks. And I am the Media and Communications Director on the Executive, alongside my colleagues here. <laughs> so, now that you know all about CBAF, I'm going to introduce to you a gentleman who has vast background in the arts, and especially in our culture, and he is here to represent the Ministry of Tourism, Heritage and Creative Industries. And he's no other, we're very proud to have him today to be our keynote speaker. And that's Dr. Kentry Jean-Pierre. Thank you, please welcome him. Thank you, Jackie. Mr. Irvin Duran, Chief um, Executive Director, other members of the Executive of CPATH. I want to acknowledge as well uh, representatives of CDF, the Department of Creative Industries, the Coalition of Services Industries, School of Music, Pom Damu, Safa Lewis Community College, the Audiovisual and Film Association, and all those other prominent people that I see sitting here. Um, Brother Kennedy Samuels, Jack Duplessy, and all of those other people. I mean, I, I could go on and on naming everybody. I just want to thank you all the press as well, for this invitation to address the official launch of the Caribbean Performing Arts Federation. 
as has been indicated before, CPAF is a private partnership, not for profit organization registered in Dominica with registration throughout the OECS, which mission, of course, is to is the fostering and, pro and promoting of the performing arts primarily in the OECS subregion. In that regard, I want to point out, I propose, CPAF proposes to facilitate the development of an enabling environment for the implementation of a more integrated OECS creative arts sector with a specific focus on the professional and personal development of industry practitioners. Now, this is essentially what the Department of Creative Industries in St. Lucia is all about. In essence, the rationale for setting up CPAF and the Department of Creative Industry offers the perfect platform for the type of public-private partnership that the government of St. Lucia advocates. Now, I will get back a little later to the idea of, of public-private partnership. But allow me to say a little about the creative industries. Of course, the creative industries concept is relatively new. But the creative industries are important for the solution economy in terms of the value added generated and the fact that it generates a great deal of employment. Now the term creative industries is sometimes used synonymously with culture. But as the executive director pointed out earlier, creative industries go beyond culture. Creative industries emerges when profit and income and things like gross domestic product and all of those other um, fiscal terms, rather than survival and self-actualization become the motive for cultural activities. Essentially, of course, the creative industries are market-oriented economic enterprises that arise out of the people's creative talents. They involve people's intellectual property, which is essentially the artistic and commercial creations of the mind, including art, craft, fashion, music, literature, film, software, advertisements, and architectural designs, and so on. Creative industries today form the powerhouse of the new world economy. Essentially, it is, in a sense, culture that makes money. It represents businesses whose main purpose is to create and distribute traditional intellectual and artistic products, including, but not limited to film, video, and other types of audiovisual media, music, television, radio, theater, books and magazines, sound engineering, sound, sound recordings, food, craft, clothing, etc. It represents people at work, the fruits of their labor, and the sale of both the fruits and the labor to generate income for survival. So, in that regard, culture represents a form of labor. And it is when that labor finds expression in various creative forms that one becomes an artist or a cultural worker, so to speak. Now, cultural workers and artists normally make a living by exchanging ideas with what I refer to as cultural pioneers for money. See, because cultural pioneers link art to business. They make business out of culture. Artists or cultural workers are motivated by ideas. Cultural entrepreneurs are motivated by profit. With this government, 
artistic interests are promoted mainly by the CDF, the Cultural Development Foundation, and the interest of cultural entrepreneurs mainly by the Department of Creative Industries. But back to the public-private partnership idea. Public-private partnership refers to, of course, arrangements between public and private sectors, whereby some of the services that fall under the responsibilities of the public sector are provided by the private sector with some kind of agreement on shared objectives for the delivery of these services. Public-private partnership combines the skills and resources of both the public and private sectors, thus enabling government to benefit from the expertise of the private sector and allowing the government to focus on policy, planning, and regulation. In that regard, I refer to a recently approved, um, a recently cabinet approved document detailing government's policy and strategic framework for the development of the creative industries in St. Lucia. Of course, this document was itself developed through a process of consultation between government agencies and personnel and private concerns. Then, there is the issue of, develop, of developing creative industries legislation. In due course, as a working document develops, private personnel and institutions like CIPAF will be brought into the consultative framework. Be that as it may, in order to achieve a successful partnership, a careful analysis of the long-term development objectives and risk allocation is essential. It is my hope that opportunities for such analysis will be created by both the Department of Creative Industries and organizations like CPAF. This is the only way that creative industries legislation, that the creative industries legislation which I mentioned, will present an adequate legal framework to support collaboration and to appropriately nurture, promote, monitor, and regulate creative outputs and services. All of that must be seen against the background of the current economic difficulties in which there are constraints on public resources and fiscal space and a growing need for investment to help the economy grow. In such a situation, government has to look to the private sector and to not-for-profit organizations like CPAF as an alternative additional source of expertise and resources to meet the gaps created by the economic difficulties and the dearth of expertise within the public sector. The CPAF development platform I have read on the brochure will be founded on four main pillars. Product development, educational development, showcase events, and the regional youth challenge. This reminds me of four major challenges for the creative industries identified by PACE. And of course, PACE is the acronym for Professionals in Action for Creative Enterprise, which is an advocacy group for persons involved in the creative arts in St. Lucia and the wider OECS. And not too long ago, they conducted um, a survey of the creative industry sector, and they identified four major challenges for uh, practitioners in that sector. One, finding markets for sale of work. Two, obtaining materials and equipment. Three, finance. And four, qualified service providers or trained staff. There is a striking similarity, I find, between the PACE identified challenges 
and the CPAF development platform. This suggests to me that CPAF is on the right track. The Department of Creative Industries will have to be mindful of that reality in undertaking any cultural or creative industries initiative. The good thing in all of that is that those challenges are not ins insurmountable. They can all be dealt with if you have that level of collaboration and partnership that I have spoken about. So, I will end here by thanking you for this opportunity to be part of this development that is happening right now. And I look forward to continued engagement with CPAF. I wish you every success in your future endeavors. I want now to officially announce the launch of the Caribbean Performing Arts Federation, CPAF. All the best. Thank you very much, Dr. Jean-Pierre. And now I feel that we are really launched in St. Lucia. And I, I feel really good about this because this has been a lot of work towards this launching. And, uh, you know, it's happened and it's happening. And I, I feel really great about it. So now that we are officially launched, at this time, to, I'm going to open the floor that if anyone has questions to any of our panel here, that you feel free at this time to come forth and ask your questions. And we just heard from Patsy Kadeh, who I'm very happy to see here today, one of our leading uh, artists from way back, who opened the gates for a lot of artists in St. Lucia, and who was on the world stage. And Patsy, we're proud of what you have done. Thank you.
Now on the other hand, I mean like excuse me my data. I think what I'm most interested in and can show you that to it is the the profit, the money making side of of um, the creative industry. And I wanted to find out what is CCAP doing basically to promote the artists, to promote the creative industry outside of the region. This is where the money will be coming from for the foreign exchange, you know, to expand or to grow our GDP. So I'm saying as much as we talk about brand and marketing within the region, we have to look outside of the region to see how we can promote and market the collective creative energy of um, our artists. I will try to do that in two minutes. Um, <laughs> we have had several discussions with the ALBA, that's we on a Dominican level, and uh, we would like to think that, again, when we say we, we are speaking OECS in general here. So, we believe that we have an access through ALBA member states, which I think is at 81, and the South American um, market is a, is, a, is, is a target, and uh, we have uh, we are currently undergoing the development of the GEMS package, which is what we want to ship out of the OECS. We want to be able to take it and rotate it around the OECS islands, create a lot of waves that could beat the shores of Barbados and Trinidad and the other Turks and up north. Well, French market is almost like an obvious, and the BVI, the USVI, and the French markets are like. When we say OECS, we kind of have them in there as part of the whole mix. But ALBA is a focus for us because um, we know that our culture has similarities with the South Americans and a lot of the ALBA is done that way. And uh, the, there is a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a market there for, for our talent and our creativity. Um, I am in um, some discussions as well with uh, someone who is working on a festival for Ireland and we want to have, um, people have referred to the concept of trying to put these gems together as a mini Carifesta or whatever they call it. The fact is it's branded the gems, Caribbean gems and we are in discussions with these people outside if we can burst into the European market using the French market it's going to be um, a joy a joy for us. Um, we know St. Lucia is the closest in terms of the Creole and the content, but in terms of music, music is music, and in terms of drama and performance or whatever byproduct that goes down even into film, there are subtitles. We're in 2014. Okay? We're good? Thank you. Thank you, Vin. Are there any other questions? Sure. Go ahead, this is Barbara Bully from Dominica. Jackie told me about the concept of CPAP. It was very exciting. Particularly because you mentioned the database, which I've been hearing you at all about today. Um, I think that database is of paramount importance because um, the team actually so well, I'm sorry. Thank you. Because I know that many people sometimes want to get into the Caribbean and they want to put on a performance, like I mentioned to Jackie about a group in Toronto right now, they're called Ballad Poyol, and they're very, very interested in getting into Caribbean tribe music and knowing which island offers what. Right now they're trying to get people to come into the Caribbean for jazz festival, because they really come with jazz. And they have no idea where they can find a panel that lists all the jazz festivals in the Caribbean. It's like, if they don't know that St. has one, they have to go to thank its database to see when it's going to be there. Whereas you can offer that sort of information. So somebody overseas can just go to that particular website and see everything that's happened in the Caribbean as far as, as culture, music, um, plays, you know, jazz or versus Creole performances, etc. So I'm really looking forward to that in there. And names of particular people, like they want to uh, break such sacks up on it. Let's say that see Jack to place his name there. Contact him. How can you contact him? We want him for a concert in Geneva. 
we're looking for somebody like that. So, I'm, I'm really very excited about the possibility of these things happening. Um, um, Helen mentioned about education and development of people as well. And um, this lady from Marina, Sandra, mentioned it too. Um, how about workshops? How about us forming workshops? Those of us who think we have something to pass on. Shouldn't there be a regular workshop this summer so that we can go from one island to the other and say, well, this workshop is going to help, to help you to learn how to read if you can't read properly, how to yeah, perform, how to, how to write a, a play. One day in workshop, we can't, we can't rely on the schools to do that for a time because there will be people who are no longer in school that need to know how to do these things as well. So I think all of these things have to be incorporated into CCAP as well. Yes. And I want to know how many islands were involved. Is it just Asia? Is it from Trinidad to Jamaica? How, how are we spreading this joy, this wonderful um, idea? That I will let Sandra speak to, to you on this. It was an omission on all of us part about the online database because I think we all expected the other one, it was just mentioned in passing. Well, one of our objectives is to develop and maintain a comprehensive OECS performing arts database. Not only will it zero into the specifics of the performing arts. As you would see on the brochure, that we're looking at all the little aspects. So if you are on the performing side, you will indicate what you do, whether you're music, your theater, your dance, you're just a vocalist, whether you're on the composing side. If you're a musician, what kind of instrument do you, do you perform? And also the support mechanism. While I focus in the development platform on the young people, it will not stop there. It will also expand into persons who are already performing. To, to, to hone their talents and things like that. And workshops are on the agenda. So persons who have some training mindset can also register on the database so we know, okay, if we have to go to St. Lucia, we don't have to bring in somebody from Trinidad or bring in somebody from Kenya like we tend to do in the Caribbean. We bring people from far-flung places and pay them far-flung money too when we have the talent right among us. So the database would not only include the performing artists, but it would also include the support services from Bramble to Timber and our parts in between, including the whole issue of the education component of it. Because actually, when we were in Dominica last month, we had an discussion, extensive discussion with our directors of trade, director of trade. And one of the things that I've discovered is that there is a disconnect between the public sector and the private sector. The public sector, not too sure what the creative sector really is. And as the parliamentary secretary says, sometimes we use the term interchangeably creative and cultural, which is really wrong. Because cultural is really a subset of creative. I mean, if you want to, you know, for the, you know, the semantics. So one of the things we're looking at how do we start with some kind of symposium? And what really is this sector that, as Yvonne said, that CARICOM and the OECS has embraced as a priority sector? We don't just want to pay lip service to, oh, it is one of the nine priority areas. Oh, we've signed the EPA agreement with Europe and entertainment is featured highly. Oh, it is part of the trade agreements with Canada. So what do we sign? What happens after that? Because I keep saying the fact that entertainment is featuring on these trade agreements, the fact that the EPA has a 25-page cultural protocol tells me somebody out there somewhere recognizes that the Caribbean has something to offer. Do we recognize we have something to offer? And if we don't, it is about time that we do. So that is part of what we want to do. How do we get one of our policy makers to understand the importance? Like I said to my Minister of Trade recently, I say I, it was in the context of the services sector, but specifically to the creative sector, which is what I sit on my local CSI to handle. It does three things. 
It creates entrepreneurs, it fulfills domestic need, and it is exportable. Politicians, if they want, they can make a whole lot of hay out of that. But I'm not a politician. So we really have to get all sectors to understand, from the policy makers, what do we need to do from a policy level to provide that enabling environment? And the industry practitioners are not let off the hook. We sit on our hands and bitch up, government ain't doing this and government ain't doing that. My question is, what are we doing? Are we using our creativity? Are we getting off our behinds and doing something to help ourselves? We have to remember, politicians think in five-year cycles. We here forever until the good Lord calls us home. So we can't afford to think in five-year cycles. We have to think in international year-in, year-out cycles. Like Ms. Kadi, she has set the platform for those that was coming behind. What, are we, what legacy are we leaving for those who come behind? CPAPS is going to try our best to educate our policymakers, but also educate our industry practitioners that we too have a responsibility to help ourselves. What's the saying? God help those who help themselves? Can't sit up and watch the, 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 the basket are closed and want to and figure, oh Lord, I need to wash. And then it's seven o'clock at night and oh Lord, I need to wash. We have to start somewhere. And this is what CPAP wants. Thank you, Sandra. I just want to point out something at this point. I think that we, we, we did not talk a lot about, although Sam alluded to the database and also the website and the, um, huh? and the membership. For everybody in different categories, we have the membership application forms, but also the description of each category and the, the fee, annual fee for each category. There are costs to set up workshops like we want to. There are shops, there, there, there are costs to, to market, to promote, to do a lot of things, in fact. So, how do we do that? Yes, we have to probably apply for some grant funding, but you know that's not easy and it doesn't come just like that. So we have to look at membership. And I want to point out that when you become a member, you will see on your brochure that there are benefits to being a member. It's not just saying I'm a member of CPAP. There are benefits to being a member. If we are to do take artists and bring them to other islands, like we did actually for the Dominica launch, we brought in Omari Banks, we brought in um, Mr. Killer, and we were, Meshach was on his way, but the funding did not come through. And this is why we have to engage with a lot more partners that will help us with these things because you need airline tickets, you need accommodation and all these things. But this is our aim, to bring the artists to the very, we're here in St. Lucia, we don't know what's going on in Dominica. St. Vincent doesn't know what's going on here. We are, we, are, we are small countries, but we're so close, but yet we don't know what's going on. And our artists need to expand their fan base, right? So this is one of our aims, to bring the artists to the various islands, get them into festivals, but also partner with people to create concerts and, 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 and platforms that they can perform at and therefore expand their fan base, that people know more about them, so they'll be invited to another island another time, you know? And this is what we're aiming to do. Now, we cannot extend that courtesy to people who are not part of CPAF. You must be a member of CPAP to be able to benefit from that. We're not going to go outside of CPAP and take an artist and send them somewhere. You have to be a member of CPAP. Also, when we're looking into workshops across the OECS, in various workshops, because we are about developing, and whether it's in film or whether it's in music or whether it's in acting or whether whatever, theater, 
We are looking to get members of CPAF to do the facilitation. We don't want to go and get somebody else from out there to do the facilitation. So this is why we need for people to sign up and become members. Our website should be, it's, it's up, but it's not up and running. It's still under construction. But as Sam said, it should be within the next couple of weeks. It should be there. So it will be www.c-paf.com. Come, right and you go on there and you see what's happening everybody that got an invitation today got a CPAF in a nutshell document this document is extensive it's done in a PowerPoint presentation and in there you see there's all the information that you want to know about CPAF so take the time and read it please and I we will be embarking our task force here in St. Lucia will be embarking on a membership recruitment drive and you're going to see us everywhere and I'm, I'm hoping that you all will tell your friends and let your friends tell their friends and that we really have a great membership to represent St. Lucia and bring people across the OECS and globally as well. Okay? So that's it. Okay? Alright, so at this at this point, um, I'd like to bring on Martha Blanchard, who's going to give us the vote of thanks. Expressions of appreciation, joy, and gratitude, and we will end in the same spirit. We'd like to acknowledge and thank our brothers and sisters from St. Vincent, Dominica, and Grenada, Mr. Irvin Duran, Ms. Sandra James, and Mr. Samuel Brown, directors on the executive of CPATH who are here with us today. Through your presentations and remarks, you have highlighted for us the true essence of this organization, its purpose, timeliness, and significance in helping us chart the way forward for the performing arts within the creative industries of the OECS. We thank you for taking time off your busy schedule, your busy lives, to be with us here in St. Lucia. We do hope that your short stay with us has been a pleasurable one. To the Ministry of Tourism, Heritage and the Creative Industries, the presence of our Parliamentary Secretary with responsibilities for the Creative Industries, Dr. Kent Richard We thank you for your presence, words of encouragement, and for the kind support and assistance of, by your ministry. We need to thank supporting partners who came on board to make this launch possible, the Bay Gardens Hotel management and staff, St. Lucia Coalition of Services Industries and the Dominica Export Import Agency, better known as DEXIA. To all our artists and support persons in the performing arts who are with us today, your presence here has only strengthened our resolve to succeed in our mission and vision. To the media, we thank you for your continued support of the arts and commitment to the advancement of our country through an informed public. To the staff of the CSA Center for your behind the scenes support and venue preparation and facilitation. Finally, to our task force whose quiet dedication behind the scenes has made today possible. We appeal to our brothers and sisters of the performing arts. You in your relentless dedication to your craft that you partner with us in making this federation become the legitimate body that will herald a new era for the performing arts. That through this federation we will once and for all set a mandate and a standard for those sectors within the creative industries. That it will become a bridge we cross in establishing world partnerships of equality, respect, diversity, and fair business practices as we expand beyond our boundaries. We thank you all refreshments and now served at the back of the room. Thank you so much.